Welcome everyone to another episode of the Thought Leaders Business Lab for a Thursday. I'm your co-host Tim Hyde and I'm joined as always by the wonderful Samantha Riley. Hi Sam. Hey, how are you today? I'm doing really well, thanks. Now we've got a cool episode planned today. Yes, um, I love this topic. But, love this uh, topic. But before we do, we do, we had a really interesting question that come in from Miranda at Diamond Dancewear during we the week. We did. And, so big shout um, out to Miranda. She's got an awesome, awesome costume business for all you mums and dads that have got little ones in dancing. Look I need up. a pirate costume. Oh, well, I don't know. Reach out. She probably can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Miranda. <laughs> all right, now, now, Miranda, because we, we were talking last time about um, really how we create leverage in our business. And... Miranda, I think, asked a question, I guess, that's on a lot of people's minds is, is that how do we kind of make this transition from just you to, you know, building a team? Because I think yes. a lot of people think that, you know, you have to hire someone full time, but it's not the yes. case, is it? No. Um, and I think that that stops so many people dead in their tracks and means that they can't move forward as fast as they could, thinking that they need to save up to, to hire a full timer. That's right. So Miranda asked, what are your recommendations for the best places to find a virtual assistant for tasks, things like website updates and you know, posting social media content. And if you yes. have a little task that you really should be getting off your plate. Absolutely, so and thanks for asking this, Miranda, because I think that this is a question that so many people have and maybe haven't even thought <coughs> is a question. Um, so, there's, so there's two different uh, ways that you can go about this, or well, these are the two ways or, um, yeah, ways that I actually hire people in my business as well because I don't have uh, team members that look after everything. And the first one is what I would call out tasking. So it's getting having one task that you're having someone else do. Um, there's a website called fiverr.com. It's f i v e r dot com, and uh, you can find all sorts of things up there. Creating YouTube, you know intros and outros and design tasks and there's gosh there's millions of tasks there you can totally get caught in the rabbit hole there I know when it started you could um, you could hire people for five dollars now they're a little bit more expensive but you know it's still relatively inexpensive so uh, fiverr.com is a great place to go to get uh, one task done and the other one that I use is upwork.com and, uh, you know, if, if I want to have a Facebook pixel put on my website, for example, I'll just put it on Upwork and freelancers will come and they'll actually bid for the job and then I, I hire them. So that, that's a really great first, first way to get things done is to up-task, up-task, out-task. <laughs> yeah, and those, those are two sites that I've used extensively as well. And you can find some really great people um, and whether it's just you need for sort of five hours a week, five hours a month um, or more, you can certainly scale up if you find someone really good that you can build a relationship with. And effectively, they become part of your, your team, even though well, they're was, in, in the office with you. Say that. That's a really great way to test people. The person that, uh, that edits our audio for this podcast, I originally found an Upwork. Now he's a, a regular team member. The person that does the show notes for our, our show, we found through Upwork as well. Hey, Tim. And um, they're both amazing members of our team that work for us every single week tirelessly to get this episode out to you. Absolutely. Some other ones, of course, you can also go to companies like Automation Agency, which I know you have, and a bit of a shout out to Carl over there. Yeah. And you can get sort of tasks done through organisations like that as well. So start looking around. Um, you'll certainly find them. You don't necessarily have to have someone you know, 20 hours and a lot, know a lot of the VA agencies are out there. So, you know, you must buy 20 hours worth of stuff. Um, you know, you can start small. You can start with a couple of hours. You can start with a single task in a, on an ad hoc basis through some of those sites in there. Absolutely. They and work we'll, really well. We'll pop those links in the show notes. But let's jump into today's episode. Now, yes. Now, today's episode is all about building a standout brand. One of my favourite topics. I think this is a great topic. Before we go into it, I want to know from you, why do you think that this is actually an important thing for a business to do and or aspire to? I, look, I think there's, there's so many different facets to this that people don't realise. Number one is 
I think we can get uh, caught up modeling other people that we respect in our industry. And what happens is we start, you know, we're vanilla. We don't stand out at all because we look like other people. We're in actual fact, what we bring, what each of us brings is so unique. You know, it's, it's like a fingerprint. There is, we've got, and we're going to go into this a little bit deeper, but there's everything that we bring to the table. No one else can replicate exactly the way that we can do it. Uh, and the second thing is, I think that it gives you so much more confidence by building something that's absolutely unique, that has you standing out in such a, a noisy online marketplace these days, that you've got the confidence to know exactly what it is that you stand for and what it is that you provide to the market. Because, you know, imposter syndrome is a huge thing these days for so many people. And the more that we're trying to do what other people do, the more that imposter syndrome comes up. Yeah, one of the um, one of the movies I love is uh, Jobs. The first version of the Jobs is Steve Jobs movie um, after he passed away, and where Ashton Kutcher is portraying. Steve I Jobs. love that movie. Oh, it's, it's awesome, and he has all the, you know um, Steve Jobs' little mannerisms. He does. He's done. Yeah. So well. Um, there's one scene in it where uh, Steve, as part of the the you know the Apple story and the Steve Jobs story, is actually removed from. Uh, from the Apple board as the CEO, and he's kind of given the flick, even though he still owns a fair bit of the bit of the pie. And the guy who who is then CEO starts talking to to Ashton Kutcher, also to Steve Jobs in the in the film, and says, you know, we seem to be have lost our way, right? And this is where Apple were doing really well and did lose their way when they brought in I can't recall who it was the Pepsi, the CEO, Pepsi guy, <laughs> the Pepsi guy, uh, and and completely lost their way and. There's one line in it where he's asking Steve and says, you know, why, why isn't it working for us? And, and Steve says, said, look, and I'm going to sort of paraphrase here a little bit, but he says something like, we were really good at being Apple. And since you've been appointed, we've tried to be like IBM. Mm. And I think IBM will always be better at being IBM. Than mm. Right? They've got the roadmap. They know where they're going. What they're doing, they can yes, they're going to hit potholes. But we're going to hit if we try and be IBM, we'll just hit the same potholes. And we'll Absolutely. Yeah. Right? And and this is in a, in a much smaller scale as well. If we start copying other people and what people are doing, we don't have the roadmap. Yes. Right. And we'll always be second to what that other person is trying to trying to do. So you can't be Gary Vaynerchuk. The only person that can be very Gary Vaynerchuk is Gary Vaynerchuk. You can be you. And, and just have to have the confidence to do so. Yeah. And we've all seen people trying to be other people and sometimes they don't even realize they're doing it. Um, and, it and it never comes across a hundred percent authentic. Um, so you won't stand out for the right reasons. You may stand out for a little bit while someone's going, Oh my goodness, what are they doing? But we want to be standing out for all the right reasons, not just standing out, but really shining so people just know exactly what it is that we do and exactly how we can help people. Absolutely. Now, I know you have what you think are the three, three keys. Yes. Sorry, the three keys to building that standout brand. Yes. Uh, what's the first one of those? First one is getting really clear on what your talent and what your knowledge are. So this is the logical part of what you've done in your life, whether it's your university degree, whether it's what you did at school, um, you know, whether it's what you've studied or previous jobs and really getting clear on what those things are and really drilling down. So let me give you um, uh, an example of this. I, for over 20 years, was a dance teacher. And um, one of the things that I realized that I was very, very good at was being able to break down complex, you know, in, in dance, you know, we're counting in, in lots of eight in music. And when you're, when you're teaching a, a four-year-old a movement that goes over eight counts, that's quite a lot for them to take in. So what I was really good at was breaking them down into little micro pieces and then joining them together so that they were, you know, they understood what the movement was. And I didn't realize that a lot of other dance teachers didn't do that till we were at competitions and you think, you know, their teams may have looked a little bit sloppy and everyone was all over the place. And I realized that that was one of my talents was to drill down. Once I really understood that, 
I also then realize that's exactly how I work with my clients, that I get a complex um, topic and I'm able to drill down and break down all the little pieces so that people understand the context. So, you know, don't just think, oh, I'm good at, um, you know, HR. It's what are the, when you drill down into that, what are you good at better than anybody else? Or what are you, you know, um, your absolute genius zone within that, that talent or that knowledge that you can apply to other things? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really interesting. And I don't know if you intended to kind of express this or not, but how that skill of being able to break down a complex concept into, you know, easily consumable chunks actually translate across businesses and across kind of, you know, silos in your life. So you might actually have something in your personal life that you do instinctively. And when you start to kind of look at that and go, you know, can I apply this in a business context or can I apply this to how I work with my customers? And it, that, that kind of inspiration, that talent can actually come from somewhere else entirely. Totally. If you're a mum of six kids and, and you're working full time and you're able to fill six lunch boxes and have kids going to school with a healthy lunch every day, that's a huge talent. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, that, so start to look at different things that you're doing that other people say, wow, I wish I could do that. I wish I knew how to do that. It's the things that we find super easy that we take for granted almost sometimes. Yeah, and, and you do. There's lots of things that we do instinctively. And we, like when it comes to automation, you, know, you and I have had this conversation. You've seen how I build stuff. Uh-huh. I'm super uh, jealous of it, by the uh, way. That's certainly <laughs> not my genius. Zone. But I was, having, I was having this conversation with a guy in Romania the other day and he was saying, like, you know, what to show me, you know, this, I guess, how do you build this, this pipeline? And for me, kind of looking at all the different variables of, of you know, translating a one-on-one conversation that I would have with someone into kind of machine language and all these little decision trees that, uh, that we have is something that's really instinctively. And I was reflecting just the other day as I was talking to someone about this, that all of the things I've done in my life, you know, I've done project management, um, I've done marketing, I've done, uh, you know, online media companies. I've, I was working in IT with the government for, for a very long time. I studied IT at uni, you know, and, and bringing all these little skills from all over the place have actually just created this most perfect storm that now in this marketing technology space that I work in, um, it just becomes instinctive to me totally. to break that down and build quite complex things like super quick that, that other people go, oh my God, how on earth did you do, did you do that? That looks yes. really hard. Yes. But again, that's my zone of genius. That's exactly right. So, so that, you know, if someone wants that built, definitely your zone of genius, my zone of genius is being able to very quickly see how to help people build a standout brand because uh, someone's explained it to me that I'm like an x-ray. A few people have said that you're like an x-ray because someone will start talking and I could just can see through all the words and be able to pull out, you know, this standout brand sometimes within only a couple of minutes of meeting them. So when you're very, very clear on what your talent is using your past, uh, you know, job experiences and knowledge and drilling down onto that, it's because it's those, that drill down that's the exciting part. When you really get clear on those little tiny nuances that you've got that no one else has, that's when it's really cool. That's right. I mean, we've inadvertently sort of already talked about the second point to building that standard brand and that's your life experience, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So this is really great because what this does is brings the heart to the business. This brings in the, um, the empathy that we have with our clients, which I believe is so, so important because people are doing business with us as a brand, not a big company. This is what we can do that the big giants like Coca-Cola don't do. You know, if you want, if you want a Coke, you go get it. There's no feeling there. It's just you're thirsty and that's what you feel like. But when people come to us as, you know, coaches and consultants and, and um, you know, we are the brand. So being able to bring that empathy in, it's really helpful. So what sort of life experiences have you had in, well, it could be past jobs. It could be, um, you know, divorce. It could be, 
um, a health journey that you've been on. It could be the journey of being a parent. So I mean, there's a ton of experiences, but bringing all of these in so that you can really relate to your target market is so, so important. Absolutely. So third one. Third one is really awesome. And uh, this is, you know, just that little key that opens it even, even deeper. And I know a lot of people talk about it and that's passion. But I feel that a lot of people don't bring that talent, that knowledge and the life experiences in and they try and build a business just on passion. But what we need to do is bring the passion in underneath this knowledge pieces that we've had. So this is the, the things that really light you up, that make you excited, you know, so that you're not just leaving a legacy, but living your legacy, doing things that make you excited and energetic so you get out of bed in the morning on the days that it's not easy to work you know i know tim you and i absolutely love what we do but there are still some days that aren't easy and i've like you know <laughs> walking away <laughs> you know there's plenty, there's plenty of those and and that's where it comes down to we were we were talking before we we, we aired uh, you know about confidence yes. and and you know, every so often, even people who are really good at what they do and have that passion, have that knowledge, have that experience, really working in that genius zone that we talked about um, so often, you know, over the last few episodes, is that your confidence can get a knock from time to time, can't it? Can't it? You know, if someone Absolutely. says, you know, that, that contract you thought was going to get out, that client is, you know, just questions you. Um, and I think everyone has that sort of, you know, am I... Am I really in the right space? Am I doing what I really want to do? You know, do I feel like yes. keep doing this? Yeah. Um, and you've just got to, I think you've just got to overcome that. Absolutely. I, I remember seeing a documentary and I don't know what it's called, but I will look it up and put it in the show notes. Um, but it was a documentary I saw on the founders of um, Vino Mofo and Canva. And there, there was another app that was something to do with um, business processes. Oh, can't remember what it is, but I watched this and these are, these are unicorns, you know, these are businesses that have grown very quickly to huge amounts of money. What I loved about this documentary was the founders sharing their raw and real story of just thinking, you know, going through this phase of, I know I can do this. We've totally got this. And then going, Shivers, do we really? Like, this is really hard. Should I just walk away? And, <coughs> you know, and that was super helpful you know, to see other people go through the same journey because I don't think, I've never met anyone that doesn't have that journey of I'm on top of the world, I am conquering this and I am, you know, this is fantastic. And then the next day, just like, what am I doing? Can I, can I keep going? Yeah. Now you talked early in the episode about this idea of imposter syndrome. I want yes. to kind of bring you back to that very quickly. What does that mean, do you think? So I think this imposter syndrome is that thing where we just feel like, who am I to be doing this? And this is just such a, a, a cancer in what we're out there to do. You know, we, I know that in the people that listen to this show, we're building this business to, to inspire people, motivate people, have people living their best lives in whatever vehicle we choose. And this imposter syndrome can just bring us to our knees thinking we're not good enough. Um, interestingly, there's a, I don't, have you heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect, Tim? I haven't actually. I love the Dunning-Kruger effect. And there's a, a really great video on YouTube that you can look up around this. But this is an effect that, People that don't know very much usually have a huge amount of confidence in what they're doing and not so much of the skills. And the more a person learns, the less confidence that they have that they've got the knowledge. Because I think the more you learn, the more you realise you don't know. <laughs> so when someone comes to me and says, I don't know if I'm good enough to do this, I usually know they're the exact people that I want to be working with. That's right. That, that unconscious uh, incompetence space is uh, often referred to as bliss. <laughs> yeah. so, so just be aware that the Dunning-Kruger effect is a thing. If there are some days you feel like you're not good enough to be doing or who, who am I going to be doing this, you know, start have um have some things on the side that you know that you can tap into like a podcast or an audio or a video that you that is your go-to that you know that will pep you up again have your 
your legacy items listed out or your purpose items listed out. Just go to things that when you have this imposter syndrome, that you can just change your focus, go, yep, yeah, no, I've totally got this. I totally need to be getting out there because I know that I'm going to change millions of lives and get back on track. Yeah, and it is a lot of that just positive reinforcement. You know, whether you get it from an external source or whether you take it from yourself and as part of your morning routine, you just give yourself that little mantra and that little pat on the back that says, I've got this. Yeah. Um, you know, wherever you find that, I think that's an important thing to, to put into your routine. Uh, ironically, as you were talking about that, I recall a, a program I was involved with quite a few years ago now, I think sort of eight to 10 years ago. Um, put on by two guys in Melbourne, um, Paul McCarthy and, and Brad Tanini, who were partnered up at that time. Um, Brad's a, a really awesome sales trainer. Um, Paul's a fantastic marketer in his own right as well. And they were running a program called an Expert Transformation, really about uh -huh. empowering coaches, consultants and, and small business owners to own their expertise, own their life history, own their knowledge, own their experience and so on. And I was sitting next to this girl who was a sales and, and marketing coach. Mm -hmm. And she's sitting there in the audience and, and I could see that she was really quite distressed um, as we were sort of talking about this stuff. And she just kept saying to herself, I could hear her talking and I said, you know, what's, what's wrong? And she said, you know, these guys are just going to be better at all the stuff that I do for the rest of my life, right? And I said, please, it doesn't matter, right? You just have to be the best in your world. Yes. Right? And, and to, to lead and build a standout brand, you just have to be kind of confident in you and your experience as we've been talking about. Yes. Your passion. You know, you've got a different set of experience than these yes. guys. And yes, you, right now, you are the student. But yes. in another room, right? If you've got the microphone on the stage, you're the expert. Yes. Right? And, and that's, that's something that that realization for me is something that's been stuck in my head ever since that, that the expert is the guy with the microphone on the stage and for no other yeah. reason. And you know what? There are always going to be people that are better than us, but we're also a different person today than we were yesterday. Mm. And the beauty in that, well, there is beauty in that on its own. So, you know, we're always growing or, you know, we need to commit to always growing so that we are better than our yesterday version of us. That's all we need to do. We need to compete with yesterday's version of us. That is it. Okay. Let's just recap those then. Uh, first one. First one is your talent and knowledge. So this is specifically your skills, your work skills. So the logical things that you know. Right. The second one is your life experiences. These are the things that will have you being empathetic with your, with your clients. And the third is passion. This is the thing that's going to light you up and have you getting out of bed to do your thing every single day? I think valuable lessons for anybody, potentially any stage of business to kind of just revisit every so often and say, you know, is this going to draw, you know, am I driving the standard bound? Or do I have these three pillars, um, you know, in place? And you know what? These do change. I was just chatting to a client yesterday. He is an exceptional businessman. He's been in business, had multi, uh, you know, numerous multi, million dollar businesses and has been in the you know doing what he does for like 40 years and we still tapped back into this yesterday and took it to a whole new level so I, I you know like I said we're a different person every day so it's it's worth going through this process all the time absolutely now cool episode I think um, if you've got any questions arising from today's episode don't forget to send them in using the hashtag ask Sam and Tim um, we'd love to get you, we love getting your questions and, and being able to answer them on the show. So if you've got one, feel free to send it out or reach out to us individually. Absolutely. Um, again, and next week. Next week, we've got a cool episode. We're actually going to talk about building a basic marketing funnel. I think this is such a valuable topic because I think marketing funnels can be extremely complex, but we also can build basic ones. And I think that... Uh, helping people get this first one done before they go to step number 10 will be <laughs> extremely valuable. <laughs> Absolutely. So looking forward to joining you, joining us next week uh, for that. Of course, don't forget um, if you really like the episode, we'd love you to subscribe uh, on YouTube or share the episode with someone you think might benefit from um, the advice we've been able to share with you today. 
um, follow us on iTunes, etc. We'd love to get your comments as, as always. And of course, any parting thoughts, Sam, because I've got one I want to share with you. Oh, okay. Well, this, I am going to share a parting thought because I think this is so, so important. There is only one you and it's not, I want you to think, it's not about you thinking, how dare, am I, how dare I to be doing this? It's how dare you not to be doing this. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'm going to leave you with a quote from Marilyn Monroe this week. Oh, one of my favourites. Share, okay. share, share. And it is that well-behaved women really make history. <laughs> and, and, what, and sit, we, hang on, we've been sitting here talking for half an hour. Why did that one come to mind, Jim? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> let's leave that right there. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of the uh, Business Lab. I hope to see you again next time. Sam, thanks as always for joining me on this wonderful Thursday and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, guys.